Gotta love when you turn a bass fishing day into a multi-species kind of day. Good times. Oh, there's a bass on a bed. Okay, that's what I needed to know. Well, I didn't expect the bass to be on beds right here, right next to the ramp. This is not what I would normally bed fish with, but this is the only thing I have rigged up that I can flip around. Can't tell how big it is, probably two and a half pounds maybe is my guess. It's hard to tell. Oh, he might suck it up. He's got it. <laughs> I twitched it once and he smashed it. Well, that took me no time to get my first fish. I was not planning on bed fishing today. I knew it was a possibility, but there he is. Actually a pretty good one, beautiful fish. All right, well, yeah, he's not, not as big as I thought. I thought he was gonna be about two and a half, but he's probably more like about two, maybe. Nice fish. Well, we're on the board, that took zero time. Right back to your bed. Now go protect that. Excellent. I'm still waking up to tell you the truth. I swore I saw another bed over here, so let's go take a look. <laughs> there's a, oh, there's a for sure bed. Oh, there's one on it. He's not that big though. We should just make a cast or two. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this fish. It's not that big, but might as well give it a quick little pitch. You know, sometimes I find that the finesse stuff is actually really good for bed fishing. Just like a Ned rig or something really simple. Seems like they eat it a little bit better. Yeah, he's definitely investigating it. It's hard to see him because we've got some chop on the water. It's not exactly ideal conditions. Originally, I thought we were gonna have perfect conditions for bed fishing. The problem is the wind is gonna be higher today than I expected. It said it was gonna be seven. Now it's saying it's gonna be 13. I mean, it's not like I can't bed fish in 13 mile an hour winds, but it's just a little harder. And then it's also gonna be overcast all day, which originally was supposed to be uh, sunny. So he's got it. Not a big one. Like I said, small fish, but it took like two pitches, so I will take it. All right, well, that took no time. We have caught two fish already. I've been out here for a whopping five minutes. So I would say we're uh, off to a heck of a start. I left a rod in my car that uh, is kind of for flipping and pitching, and I might want that. I'm gonna try a topwater real quick. I'm not sure if it'll work, but since there's a lot of cruising fish in here, you never really know. I just ran back up to my car and switched out my topwater rod. I had this uh, seven foot one medium heavy rod in the car and this is gonna be better for flipping around on beds. Okay, so I obviously started fishing right away. So I kind of owe you a little bit of an explanation. When I got out here, I was thinking, I'm just gonna cruise around, look for some fish, kind of get a feel for what the bass are doing. I didn't expect to find bedding fish that quick, let alone the fact that I caught two bass in the first five minutes. That's pretty awesome as well. Now, because I know what the fish are doing, I'm definitely gonna try to bed fish while the wind is still low. Once that wind comes up, I'll probably power fish a little bit more, maybe fish for some pre-spawn fish, maybe chatterbait, that sort of thing, whatever. But all in all, I'm pretty optimistic about how today is going to go. Also, I have an ultralight, just in case, you know me. I mean, anyways, that's enough rambling. What I want to do is go find some more big old bass. Hopefully we can find a giant on a bed. That'd be pretty cool. I'm going to rig up another rig for bed fishing, and then let's see if we can go crack on another bass. Let's go. I've never really fished with Tokyo rigs much, but the other day I was looking at it and I'm like, you know what? That's going to be a good bed fishing rig. So here we are. Look at that little straight King Rage Menace on there. This thing looks juicy. Now we get the paddle out, we stand up, and we start cruising around looking for more beds. And that's going to be my primary bed rig. Oh, there's one. I literally am on top of him. I'm gonna back up and give that fish a chance to go back to the bed. I don't have any form of anchor system on this kayak yet, so that's gonna give me a hard time for sure. You know what? I'm gonna abandon this fish. That's a smarter move. I could catch that fish, I know I could, but it's gonna take too long. He's just not quite ready to bite yet. And uh, quite frankly, I don't know why I would spend any more time on him, he's not that big. I'm actually proud of myself right now because a lot of times I don't have the self-discipline to leave fish. The good news is today I'm seeing lots of fish. The question is, the fish that aren't spawning, I don't know how active they're gonna be. I have a feeling they're gonna be in a weird pre-spawn mood. They look like they're just cruising around. They don't necessarily look like they're feeding. Eh, I just made a quick cast, caught a dink. That's cool. I'm just looking around. I gotta be honest with you, I'm super scramble-brained right now. Every time I see a fish, I get super distracted. There's a nice bass right there. It's cruising though. It doesn't look like it's on a bed. Holy cow. It looks like a cruiser. It does not appear to have any interest in eating. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it ate it. Daggummit. I pulled it out of his mouth. He ate the worm. Shoot. Are you kidding me? I can't believe that. I thought that fish was for sure spooked. I'm starting to become a huge fan of a finesse worm with a mule jig. I love a Ned rig, I really do, but I feel like this is giving them just a slightly different look, but it's still basically a Ned rig. Okay, keep moving and grooving. Oh, there's a nice fish. 
Where did my big bass friend go? My gosh, that was a nice fish. It's disappointing when you see a really big fish and then they just leave. I, I know she's probably right here somewhere, but she's probably just like, nope, I saw a kayak, no interest. Small fish, dang it, dang it. You little stink. I thought you were gonna be the five pounder. Just a little dinky cruiser, but I'll take it, I guess. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's a freaking giant. Holy crap, it just cruised through. That was a massive, massive fish. And now I'm really sad, because I have no idea where it is. It's probably long gone. When they're cruising like that, it's just like, I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do. You can luck into them, but for the most part, they're not easy fish to catch. Dink alert. If I want to catch dinks, I can just toss this thing around. I'm telling you, it's automatic. Get up here. Things have changed a little bit. How about a quick update? Okay, how about that? The weatherman was wrong. It is absolutely sunny, beautiful, and very limited wind. So I'm very, very thankful right now. I tell you what, I just wasted about 45 minutes trying to catch a couple of bass that were on a bed. There was a female, there was a male. They were probably both three to four pounds. I was so angry. I don't know why they wouldn't eat, but they just I just couldn't get them to eat, man. They were just sitting there. Sometimes bed fishing can be really challenging. Sometimes it can be really easy. The thing is, is you just got to keep your head down, keep fishing. And uh, I tried really hard for those fish, but they just they just didn't eat, man. It is what it is. With the sun being so high and with the fact that there's not that much wind, I am gonna go ahead and re-rig a couple of my setups and really change because the conditions have obviously changed, so I need to change with them. Let's go. Even though this little finesse worm is working, I am going to re-rig because I think the chartreuse head, now that the sun is so high, is not exactly what I want. This water's pretty clear. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just switch the jig head. I'm gonna go to a 1 16th ounce black. As much as I wanna put this swim bait to use, I want something else that I can bed fish with as well. So I'm gonna change this out. I know exactly what I wanna rig up on this rod a swim jig. This time of year I love to rig up a swim jig because you can not only cover water with it, but you can also bed fish with it. There's a fish. <laughs> Finesse worm is automatic. Might not be a big fish, but I will take it. I think I need to tighten my drag a little bit. That's not that big of a fish. I don't know why he's pulling so much daggum drag. Okay, well, the 1 16th ounce jig works too. Just a little dink, but I'll take it. See you, bud. There's a fish. Not, eh, pretty small. Oh man, he ditched it. Nothing big. I'm just like getting super distracted because every time I look down, I keep seeing fish cruise by me and I'm seeing a lot of respectable fish. It is so hard to stay focused when you keep seeing fish swim right by you. There he is. <laughs> There's a bunch of crappie over here, and uh, I was like, whatever, I'm gonna throw my ultralight just to get a little action. And I've got this little Rapala floating minnow on there, and uh, these crappie are right under the surface, and they're coming up and swiping at it. Quite frankly, I'm getting tired out here, man. These fish are challenging. We started out the day with two fish in the first five minutes, and I'm thinking, man, we're gonna crush them. And uh, it's just slowed down. When in doubt, just bust out the ultralight, I tell you what. All right, just a little black crappie right there. See ya, buddy. There's a whole bunch of them, so I gotta imagine I'll be able to catch more than just that guy. If I rig up a little bit different jerkbait, I think it'll work a little bit better because this thing doesn't really get down at all. It stays essentially on the surface. Okay, let's give the Yozuri Pins minnow a chance. I have a feeling this will work just a little bit better. Oh, he's, oh, he smashed it. Daggummit, I don't know how I didn't hook him. He's got it, he's got it. You don't have to set the hook very hard with these crappies since their mouths are so dang thin. Don't call them paper lips for nothing, I'm telling you. Okay, chill out. I do not want a treble hook in my finger. Chill, chill. Thank you. Well, that's a tiny little crappie, but away he goes. There he is. Another one. There's a lot of these little fish, though. He kind of swiped at it. Oh, wow. That one's really dark. Take a look at this one. He's like straight up black. Guys, look at that. That's crazy. That's cool. Crappie are cool fish, man. I really want to get better at crappie fishing. You know, I know these aren't exactly big fish, but at least it's kind of bringing up my energy level. I was getting kind of exhausted from those bass, man. And I just need to get a little bit of the tug. The tug is the drug, people. The tug is the drug. You know that. Oh, there's another one. 
Dag gum. Dag gum. There's a lot of these crappie right here. There we go. Chill out, buddy. Chill out. I don't want any injuries. The color variation is quite an extreme, man. Whew. Okay, 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 okay. Chill. Chill, bud. Chill. I don't know why I'm fishing for crappie with these treble hooks, man. I should just be throwing a donkey tail junior. I'd probably be catching them just as good. That is one thing that I really love about fish. It's just the color variation. I feel like most largemouth look about the same, but look at that. I mean, that fish compared to that last fish, completely different. Oh snap, there's a pile of them back here too. Okay, I'm gonna get distracted by crappie today. That's just how it's gonna be. There's so many of them. You guys, look at all the dots. All the dots that you can see right here, that's all crappie. These fish are just like all on beds. It's pretty cool. I could be picking them off left and right with a donkey tail. I should probably do that. I'll rig that up next, but for now, let's just see if we can catch a couple more on this jerk bait. There he is. That was fun. It's fun to sight fish these crappie. Man, that one's got some fight in him. He's not even that big. He's just pulling. He's got enough weight to him to where he's like, if he turns sideways, he can dog me a little bit. Not a bad little fish. Probably my best crappie yet. Not exactly saying a lot, but I'll take it. Man, he just totally got hooked there. All right, nice little slab right there. See you, buddy. Oh, there's another one. Smashed it. Just absolutely smashed it. Oh my gosh. Look at that one. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Nice little, nice little fish there. See you, buddy. Oh, he smashed it, but he didn't get it. Okay. As much fun as this little jerkbait is, and I can promise you I could catch about a hundred of these fish, it would just take some serious patience. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a mule jig because I'm pretty darn sure they're going to take it down just a little bit better. And I'm thinking I'll be able to pluck about 10 of them real quick. What a nice little surprise, man. Today's been such a weird day. I was planning on catching all sorts of bass and man, the bass have been a little bit finicky. They've been a little bit weird. I'm, I'm nothing but confident I could figure out the bass. But when I saw these crappie, I'm like, man, I got to do it. That's why you bring the ultralight with you. You should pretty much all always bring an ultralight with you. I feel like it's always such a good plan B. If the bass aren't cooperating, grab your ultralight, go catch some crappie, go catch some perch, go catch some bluegill, whatever you want to catch, man. Uh, you just got to have an ultralight in the boat at all times. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a huge believer in that. Honestly, the more I ultralight fish, the more I realize I just got to have one with me at all times. I actually just swapped out the jerkbait and rigged up a chartreuse donkey tail junior. The reason being is because that jerkbait, they kind of swipe at, but they don't really hit it really well. I have a feeling that this little donkey tail junior is going to get sucked down a little bit easier than the uh, jerk bait. So we're going to find out in about two seconds. Um, I've got about 4 billion crappie in front of me. So it's only a matter of time before I catch another. I'm a little brain dead right now. And I think the thing that's going to help me is this, uh, crunchy granola bar Kodiak cakes. I don't know. My wife bought it. It looks cool. It looks basically like the Nature Valley ones, except it's a different brand. So that's cool. It tastes very similar to the Nature Valley, but this claims it has protein in it. And I think I can kind of taste that. It's just a little bit more protein flavored. I don't know if that makes sense, but I tell you what, it's crunchy and delicious. Will they eat the Donkey Tail Jr.? It appears they will. Oh, he had it in his mouth. How did I miss that fish? All right, come on. Here he comes. Oh my gosh, he just slaughtered it. He slaughtered it. That's a nice one. That's a beauty. Just absolutely chomped it, dude. Beautiful fish, too. My goodness, what a beauty. There we go. All right, go back to your bed. See you later. There he is. What's nice about that chartreuse is just like the bass with using a white plastic, the chartreuse, I can see it from a mile away and I saw it disappear and I knew this guy had it. Think that fish is full of eggs? I tell you what, I think that's what it is. My goodness. Let's send this little plump thing home. See ya. Looking for it there. Oh, <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> when it disappears, set the hook. Oh my gosh. Man, they're fighting pretty darn hard. They're not even all that big. They're really not, I really wouldn't consider these fish keepers. Um, but they're fighting really hard. They're kind of fat right now because they're full of eggs. Take a look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Gotta love when you turn a bass fishing day into a multi-species kind of day. Good times. There he is. Just a little dinky crappie. Just another beautiful specimen. See ya, buddy. There he is. Another one bites the dust. I'm gonna get you set up with something. You'll catch all sorts of fish. How about that? You just literally cast that up to them, twitch it around a little bit. Then they should smash it. So I'll get you a couple set up here. You can even fish them under a bobber if you uh, if it's easier to cast because they're pretty light. 
Oh yeah, they got teeth. You gotta be careful with them fish. I just wanna see people catch fish. So Thank you. hopefully it works. Thanks so much. There he is. All right. It's a nice one. That's a nice one. Look at that fish. That's a better crappie. That's definitely the best crappie yet. That one I would eat. It's a nice one. It's really fat. <laughs> Full of eggs. Oh yeah, fry them up. I'm telling you, crappie is, that's probably my favorite. Everybody goes crazy over walleye, but I think crappie's the best. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the rest of them for you guys. How about that? And those minnows will, those minnows will work extremely well too. <laughs> yeah, see you now. Nice meeting you. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. The future generation of anglers right there. They're having fun, they're seeing fish left and right, they're going crazy. It's testing their patience. I tell you what, it's testing mine too. That dad had his hands full, but I tell you what, it's nice to see people out fishing as a family and uh, hopefully the uh, donkey tails work well for them. I think that's a bluegill. The way that was biting, that feels like a bluegill. And it looks like a bluegill too. All right, they're swarming it. Oh, he's got it. Oh, a little stink. Oh my gosh, there's a bass literally swimming underneath that duck. Golly, the amount of big bass I've seen today is crazy. I'm telling you guys, there are big bass up in the shallows, but they are not easy to catch. But that crappie I just launched out of the water, my gosh, there's just fish left and right. I'll tell you what, it's so easy to get distracted when you have fish everywhere like this. Right there, I don't know if you can see it, that's a bass bed and there was actually probably about, I mean, he's a solid bass. He's swimming around kind of corralling uh, the panfish, but he's really not locked. I'm trying to decide if it's even worth messing with him, honestly. I mean, it's a big fish, but just based on my experience so far today, I don't know if it's even worth my time because I've spent so much time chasing those fish, trying to catch them. And uh, when it comes to ultralight, man, it's automatic. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh, this girl's busting out the seams. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Holy cannoli. Today's been a lot of fun. You know, it was really challenging there for a while. There's that, there's a bass literally right there. There's no way he eats though, because he's gonna be like every other bass today. A total pain in the butt. Right, I'm gonna release this guy right here. And we're gonna just dip this thing in front of the bass's face and see what happens. He's on a bed. I think this one might actually be catchable. I'm literally about six feet from this fish and he is not leaving. So that's a good, good sign. Talk about such a scramble brain kind of day. Every time I start doing one thing, I get distracted. It's like incredible. I'm just so easy to distract. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this uh, finesse worm on him. He does not like this worm being on his bed, I can tell. You know what? This other bigger fish over here might be catchable. Now that I'm looking at her, she seems to be relatively locked. I'm so flustered with how the bass have been treating me today. It'd be nice to just, there he is. Yes, yes, yes. I was gonna say, I'm so flustered with how these bass are treating me today. It'd be nice to just catch one. Oh, nice jump. Oh yeah. I feel like I should go show these kids this largemouth, but if it wasn't bed fishing, I would, but because, ah, I dropped my water, I dropped my water. Aw, now we got lake water all over my water bottle. But I tell you what, it's got a nice little largemouth bass right there. I thought it was bigger than that, but I'll certainly take it. Um, that fish was definitely locked on a bed and we've got another one right here, but I'm not gonna spin my wheels on him. Thankful I got this fish though. Oh, he took my worm. The worm ripped. Give me my worm back. All right, let's get this fish right back so it can go back to the uh, bed. Beautiful little fish right there, that was fun. Okay, cool. Well, today is fun. I mean, it's definitely been a challenge from the bass side of things, but the uh, ultralight, is definitely the uh, the MVP today. Big fan of the ultralight. Shout out to the ultralight. Now my water is all covered in lake water, but I tell you what, it's good for your immune system. Mmm, tastes like bass. I'm gonna pick up my ultralight again because I was having a blast with this thing. So might as well just keep moving and grooving and catching lots of multi-species. And hopefully we can find a pile of crappie again. Hopefully we can find a pile of big crappie. That'd be ideal. Blue skies over here, gray skies over here. Interesting. The weatherman was half right, half wrong. Hey, there's a little cruising bass. Hey, Ethan, are you the most easily distracted human on the earth? Yes, I am, okay? Why are you asking? I'll be honest with you guys, I've probably seen a five bass limit of 20 plus pounds, I'm telling you. Little tiny largemouth bass though, but leave it to me to catch these ones, okay? Like I've said, I've seen a bunch of like four or five pounders, and then I catch this guy right here, so that's cool. There's one. What's this? Another bluegill. It's ultralight, just doing work, let's go. You'd think this would just be someone's house, but no, this is just their little boathouse. That's their house. 
you know, if I had this, that would be good for me. Like I'm cool with just that. Like that would be plenty for me. Oh my gosh, what's this? What is this? This is big. Oh my gosh, what is that? Is that a rock bass? I never caught a rock bass out here. It's a freaking meatball too. Holy cannoli. That's a beaut. I am totally fine with a rock bass of that caliber. Any day of the week, man. That is a fat, fat fish. I'm telling you, this thing is just so chunky. Meatball alert, my goodness. How many species have we caught now? Bluegill, oh, another one. Oh, largemouth. Not a bad largemouth. Holy cannoli. Glad I brought my ultralight, people, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I am glad I brought my ultralight. Holy cannoli. Yes, sir. That's a blast right there. Nice largemouth on the ultralight. I'll take it. I will certainly take it. Pin the tail on the donkey. Not a giant bass, but on the ultralight, that's a nice one. Boom shagalaga. See ya, bud. There he is. What's this? Looks like a crappie. It's a nice one. Nice crappie. Golly, they're fighting hard. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. That's another really dark one. Once I picked up the ultralight, this day has just gotten so much better. Beautiful little fish. See you, buddy. Oh, another one. My gosh. That's a nice bluegill is what that is. Holy cow. That's a tankzilla. Oh boy, came off in the boat. I'm glad I landed it. Hey, chill, 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 chill. Can I have you, please? Nice bluegill. All right, see you, buddy. There he is, crappie. Slab daddy. It seems like the species are actually grouping up too. Where I find bluegill and crappie, I also find bass. Where I find dang uh, bluegill, there's crappie. They're all just together, man. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, he popped that. Another really dark one, look at that. He's got that black throat again. That's so cool, I'm telling you what. Oh no! That was definitely a betting bass that I totally had hit this thing. He missed it though. He didn't get the hooks. This fish is totally catchable. I've got him really riled up, but the wind just keeps picking up and it's getting more and more overcast. So I'm gonna have to give up on this fish. It's probably like a two and a half pounder. So it's not like the end of the world, but at the end of the day, it's like, man, I finally had one that was ready to go and I just cannot, I can't quite get it done because the wind keeps blowing me out of place. I really, really, really should have set up an anchor system on this thing before the spawn. It's all good. I mean, he's right down there. He's locked. He's nipped at this thing a few times, but he hasn't actually mouthed it yet. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Please eat it. Does he have it? He's got it. Oh my gosh. I looked down and the white is gone. And there he was. I've been working this fish for a long time, man. I worked this fish so hard. Oh, that's an easy release. I didn't have my net ready to go and I didn't wanna, I should have just swung him. That was stupid. It's all good. Despite the fact that I totally just missed that fish, I'm actually super happy because it took me so long, but I finally did it. I made that girl bite. It was funny, the wind was kicking my butt. So I'm like messing with my stuff. I look down and my white bait is just totally gone. So I set the hook. And I'm mad at myself for not landing it. I should have just grabbed my net and netted the fish, but I was being all goofy and playing with my line. That was stupid. It's definitely overcast and windy now, so the weatherman was in fact right. It just took a little while. Pumpkin seed. Little guy. There's a fish. What's this? Got some fight in it. Feels like a bluegill. If it is, it's a nice one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Yeah, that's a nice bluegill, my goodness. Chill, chill, chill. Look at that. God bless. Look at that. That's a daggum stud is what that is. Holy cannoli. Oh, that's one way to release him. Oh my gosh. I literally twitched it. And this one already had it in his mouth. Little dinky crappie. Right there, there's a fish, come on. There he is, yes sir. Bluegill, yes sir. All right, man, it's been a good multi-species day, that's for sure. See you, buddy. When it comes to my fishing, you just never know what you're gonna get. A Little bit of ultralight, a little bit of bass fishing, a little bit of finesse, a little bit of power, a little bit of wind, a little bit of calm, 
man, you just never know what you're gonna get. Crappie, bass, bluegill. It's been a good, fun, long trip, and I am ready to go eat some food. I don't even know what I'm gonna eat. All I know is I'm hungry. There you go, see you, bud. One more fish, and then we're gonna call it. I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I want one more fish. There's a fish, there we go. All right, this little bluegill is gonna be the one I end on. Thank you, Mr. Bluegill. I am exhausted, and I appreciate you. See ya, bud. You're actually kind of pretty. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Go home, okay? Thanks. Okay, how about this day of fishing, man? I was out here for a long time, but I had a blast. I thought I was gonna be doing some serious bass fishing, but I gotta say, shout out to the ultralight. I'm so glad I brought this thing because if I wouldn't have brought it, I wouldn't have caught near the amount of fish that I did. And also, I'm so glad the crappie were up shallow. That was a lot of fun. I wasn't really expecting that, but they're straight up on beds. They are spawning, and it's a lot of fun to catch those fish. Anyways, I am tired, I'm hungry, and I wanna go home, so that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you so very much for watching. We'll catch you next time.